Wasabi, you guys. Welcome to Integration Beat Training for Advance. This is now, I think we're in part 8.1 now. And in this section, we are going to learn about Taylor series, how to implement Taylor series in our integrals. So let me first show you how the concept works. So let's say we have an integral. And let's just say like we have some, um, I don't know, f of x and then I guess some g of x, right? Some random functions f or g and then uh, I guess altogether this whole function is a nasty function to integrate, right? So very difficult to integrate. It could be even a non-integrable function. Uh, so of course we have to have bounds and most of the time we have to have bounds like 0 to 1 because a lot of Taylor series they require x to be between uh, well exactly between negative 1 and 1 uh, but sometimes uh, we will just stick with 0 to 1. Okay. So how so let's say we have a Taylor series where f of x is equal to uh, some sort of sum from n equals to 1 and then we have some sort of uh, g of x to the power of n or some sort of n function whatever right I'm just gonna write it like this just to be realistic and then what we do is we can actually plug this in into the integral and so it would look like this right it would look like this and then we have some let's see we'll end up with like n g of x n minus 1 it doesn't always look like this I'm just giving you an example uh, conceptually and then this now gives you like an oh this is an easy integral now because g of x is uh, a function that can easily be integrated and so you, you integrate it you can swap the sum out All right with 1 over n and for some uh, I'm gonna write this as g of x to the power of g from 0 to 1 and then when you plug that in you get something I don't know let's just say for some some or I guess I'll just write it like this g to the power n minus g or whatever you know and then you just simplify it and then you actually compute the sum whatever sometimes it'll, it'll come out very nicely like it won't look nasty like this it will most likely be like you know as simple as this or uh, n n plus 1 or um, 1 over n factorial you know things like that it won't it won't look like as nasty as like oh it's another function unless it's like a telescoping series then yeah it might probably but most of the time it's gonna just it's just gonna look as nice as these so this, this is how we kind of use Taylor series into our integral. So now let's go ahead and actually apply this concept in a actual integration B problem. Of course, this function is not integrable, right? But with definite bounds, there is a value, a nice value uh, for solving this. So I will, I will give you the formula. And we have a four, we have a Taylor series for ln of one minus x. Okay, and that is negative sum from n equal one to infinity. We have x to the power of n over n. Okay, this is our Taylor series for ln of one minus x. We can now plug this in to here. So what we have, so we can go ahead and plug it in. Uh, I'll, I'll 
start off slowly, I guess. Zero to one. Just to so that you see what is actually going on. Right, this this is ln of one minus x, and then we have x here. Okay, so that's that's where this com comes from. The ln of one minus x. We had this. Okay, we have ln. We are using. <coughs> ln 1 minus x okay we're using this substituting this with our Taylor series okay now now that we have that we can actually go ahead and simplify this so now this is we can just put everything in the back sub n equals to 1 1 over n from 0 to 1 and then we can simplify this x to the power of n divided by x, that's n minus 1, x to the power of n minus 1. Now, this is equal to the sum, negative sum, n equals 1 to infinity, and this is 1 over n. We have x to the power of n, for n, 0 to 1. You can just easily plug in 1, and you can see. Now this is equal to the sum n equals to 1, 1 over n squared. Okay, and what this equals, this identity here, that's equal to pi squared over 6. It's a famous Gauss sum. So the answer that we have is negative pi squared over 6. This is our answer. Okay, so that's how we... Uh, apply Taylor series into our integrals and it turns out very nicely um, I think your biggest challenge is probably just memorizing sums and Taylor series but once you start integrating a lot more uh, you you'll start to memorize these very quickly uh, you'll catch up uh, very fast okay one way of memorizing uh, Taylor series is consider this geometric series, right? Hopefully you know your geometric series. You should know your geometric series. But this is x to the power of n, right? So then if I integrate this, if I integrate this, if I integrate the geometric series, what is it equal? Right? If I integrate both sides, then what I'm getting is this is negative ln of 1 minus x, right? Again, this geometric series is for x uh, less than 1, uh, between negative 1 and 1, okay? Don't forget that. And so when you integrate both sides of the geometric series, you get this, and this is now the sum of n equals to 0, and you integrate this as n plus 1 or n plus 1, right? Plug in n equals to 0, you get 1. Plug in n equals to 0 here, you get x to the power of 1. So technically this is the same thing as n equals to 1 of n x to the power of n. Okay, we're just shifting it pretty much. And now, that's where we have this Taylor series n equals to 1, uh, negative. Okay, that's that's where that negative comes from. It's from the integration, 1 minus x. Okay? So that's where this Taylor series comes from. Hopefully that helps you memorize uh, the formula. Okay? Very intimidating. right? You're probably thinking about using integration by parts, but then you'll get stuck into a loop and it's just, it, it won't work out. Right? So how do we solve this? What, what do we do? What can we do? Um, so here, can we use Taylor series? Of course, what kind of Taylor series? Well, there is no Taylor series for ln of x. Well, there is, but it's not very 
pretty. Um, you can use geometric series though. Right? We can definitely use geometric series. We have one minus, I'm sorry, one over one minus x squared. We can go ahead and use the geometric series of this. This is just x t to the power x to the power of two n. Okay, and we could definitely use that because we can definitely integrate. We can definitely integrate this, right? Integration by parts. We can absolutely integrate that, especially from zero to one. So let's go ahead and use that Taylor series, right? And go fast. So try to catch up. So here we have the sum n equals to 0, x to the power of 2n, and then here we have ln of x dx, okay, and now this is equal, put the sum at the back, we're left with this, dx, let's go ahead and do integration by parts, it's negative 1 over x, x to the power of 2n, this is x to n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, okay? So we notice that if we plug in 1, if you let x go to 1 when multiplying these two, it's just going to be 0. If you plug in x go to 0, you take the limit, and it's just going to be 0 as well. So technically, we only have, we only have sum n equals to 0, 0 to 1, and we have x to the power 2n over 2n plus 1. Integrate again, and we're left with, we are literally left with 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 square from 0 to 1, right? And then this is just plug in 1, plug in 0. 0 is just going to make everything 0. Plug in 1, you just get negative of the sum of n equals to 0 of 1 over 2n plus 1 square. Okay? Another uh, constant identity for you to memorize uh, here. This, this portion here. This is equal to pi squared over 8. Yes, it is related to the Gauss sum, right? It is related to the Gauss sum, uh, except that it's like for odd numbers. So you should definitely keep that in mind. So the answer is negative pi squared over 8. Okay, if you want to challenge yourself, you could even prove that this is pi squared over 8, given the fact that this is equal to pi squared over 6. Uh, it is because of this. Ln of 1 minus x, ln of x dx. You probably have seen this before in integration b's, and you should have. Uh, for advanced, for advanced people, uh, but you should definitely know how to solve this. All right, and I'm going to show you that right now. Of course, we see ln of 1 minus x, right? Because this function is not integrable. So we're going to use Taylor series. And we know the Taylor series of this, right? It is the sum of infinity of n equals to 1, negative, don't forget the negative, it's negative x to the power of n over n. Okay? Remember that integral, uh, the integral proof that I showed you. So, and now we have ln of x dx. Okay? Cool, so we just go ahead. I'm going to separate this as negative in a sum from n equals to 1 to infinity, 1 over n. And then I'm just going to go ahead and integrate by parts, ln of x. We have x to the power of n is n plus 1 over n plus 1. Right, plug in 1 and 0, that's just going to become everything's 0. So here, we are left off from 0 to 1. Let's see, negative. All well, that makes this positive because of the negative distributes, it cancels it out. And now we're left off with x to the power of n over n plus 1 dx. 
And so now this gives us some, if you integrate this, you should end up with 1 over n of, let's see, it would be n plus 1 square, 1 over n plus 1 square. Okay, I guess we're going to have to do some partial fractions with this. Um, let's see. So of course, let me use the eraser. First time using an eraser here in this series. Or probably I probably have used. But we have one, right? We could do plus n minus n, right? Partial fractions. So now we're left off with n n plus one uh, minus n plus one square. Okay? Here for this portion here, this here, let me color this yellow, that is a telescoping sum. This is a telescoping sum. If you do partial fractions, if you do partial fractions, uh, you get, let's see, plus n minus n, or zero substitution, I guess I would say, you get like, let me go like this, and next to one, you end up getting one over n minus uh, 1 over n plus 1 and of course if you start plugging in numbers we get let's say 1 minus a half all right n equals to 2 you get a half minus 1 third okay plug in n equals to 3 you get 1 third minus 1 fourth and you you keep going and then of course you end up reaching for n plus 1 infinity or let me let me rewrite this. The limit as n approaches to infinity, n plus one. Okay, this is going to cancel out. This is going to cancel out. And this is going to cancel out, etc. Until you reach to infinity, which is going to equal to zero. And so you're going to left off with this number here, right? So this portion is equal to one. So this telescoping sum is equal to one. Okay. Now, how do we deal with the other side? How do we deal with this? Well, if you remember that this is equal to pi squared over six, what we have, what we have here, let me color this red actually. What we have here is n plus one squared which is equal to n equals to 2, 1 over n squared, right? So here, we just need that 1. So in order for this, in order to get this, n equals to 2 of 1 over n squared, this is pretty much equal to this, which we know is pi squared over 6. However, we added a 1. Right, n equals to one, n equals to one. So pretty much what we did is we did plus one minus one. Okay, let me kind of rewrite it this way. Okay, so for n square for n equals to two, we want it like this. We do plus one minus one. This gives us because plugging in one n equals to one is one, right? Which is what we didn't have. So we added a one so that we end up getting n equals to one. Does that make sense? Okay, it's like a zero substitution in a summation, pretty much, right? We want it like this. So for this, we want it in terms of this by adding one, because we didn't have n equals to one, right? Plugging in one minus one, zero substitution, and so this whole red portion is equal to pi squared over six minus one, okay? Let me demonstrate another example. If we had something like n equals to three, one over n squared, right? Then what this would mean is we would have to do, we would do a zero substitution. This is n equals to one, one over n squared. 
minus uh, n equals to 1, because we're missing n equals to 1 and we're missing n equals to 2. n equals to 1, we get 1. Uh, n equals to 2, we get 1 fourth. So n equals to 3, the sum where we start from n equals to 3, we do, this would be pi squared over 6, minus 1 minus 1 fourth. Okay? So it's a zero substitution, pretty much. So that's how that works. That's literally what we were what we were doing. Okay, so now that we know that, this is pi square over six minus one. So what we have in total, what we have in total is one minus pi square over six uh, plus one. Distributive property, we distributed the negative. So our answer is two minus pi square over six. So this is our answer for this Taylor series. Okay, we just have to get used to the sum. I think that's the, the hardest part is computing the sum uh, because we're integrators, not summators, you know. So, okay, we have an inverse tanch times ln of x. If you try integration by parts, you'll just get stuck in a loop and it just won't look nice okay and I don't think this is integrable either the function is non-elementary so how can we solve this well we do have a nice Taylor series for this we do the tanch inverse tanch is actually equal to the sum infinity n equal to 0 to infinity and this is equal to x to the power of 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 okay that's the Taylor series for inverse tangent and let me show you why let me show you why okay so tangent inverse tangent right we we need a we need a Taylor series for this right uh, but we do know that this is equal to the integral of dx1 minus x squared, right? Oh, but we know this we know this function has a geometric series. This function has a geometric series for n equal to zero, x to the power of two n dx. Okay? And now that we wrote this as a geometric series, we can now actually integrate it when we integrate it, we get x to the power of 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. And that's where that Taylor series comes in, right? So this is our Taylor series for inverse tanch, and that's what we're going to use. We're going to implement that in here. 0 to 1, again, it has to be this x. because we're using geometric series, so this x, this condition must satisfy, right? If the bound was something else, then, you know, things things will go wrong. You can't use Taylor series. Uh, you would have to use something else or manipulate something else, okay? So with that in mind, uh, from going from zero to one, we can go ahead and use the Taylor series n equal to 0 to infinity x to the power of 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 and then I'll put that yellow ln of x dx okay let me move this out of the way just to, just to have more space <coughs> So now let's go ahead and do integration by parts. X, this is x two n plus two over, um, I'll just put two n plus two for now. Okay. Right, of course, we know that if we plug in one, I plug in zero, it's, they're all just gonna be zero. So what we have now, is we have the sum, n equal to zero, uh, 
2 and plus 1. Uh, we have a negative now, and this is x2n plus 1 over 2n plus 2. Is this is now equal and equal to 0. This is now equal to negative a negative sum 2n plus 1. Uh, I'll do 4n plus 1 squared. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know how to compute the sum exactly. I, like I said, the hardest part about uh, doing Taylor series is computing the sum. Computing the sum is the most difficult part uh, because you just have to know so many identities and manipulation. And it's just, it gets nasty. Uh, so, But unfortunately, I don't know exactly how to compute this sum. Uh, I guess one strategy is try computing, I'm um, sorry, partial, putting it in partial fractions. Uh, when I put it in partial fractions, I get this. I ended up with uh, 4, 2n plus 1, uh, minus 2 over n plus 1, minus 1 over n plus 1 square. Okay? This part is the easiest part. Right? This part's the easiest part. Um, so, of course, we get something like pi squared over 24, but then it's it's this portion that I cannot figure out, <laughs> um, where it's like 1 over 2 and plus 1. Um, let me see, let's make sure I'm doing this correctly. Yeah, yeah, minus uh, 2n plus 2. Um, if I simplify it, I guess I could try to attempt solving this. Let's see. So here we have um, plugging n equals to 0, we get 1 minus half okay n equals to one we get uh, one third uh, minus one fourth n equals to two we get one fifth oh no way oh oh never mind okay wow I how did I not solve this okay I just didn't explicitly uh, simplify it. So, uh, so this this is equal to ln of two. Let me show you why. This is actually uh, comes from one plus x. Now, one plus x is the exact same thing uh, where this comes from, right? The integral from dx one plus x, right? Or let me write it like this. 1 plus x, this is a geometric series, an alternating geometric series, right? Yes, it's an alternating geometric series. And so now, if you integrate it, integrate both sides, you get ln of 1 plus x equal, and integrate this, we get n equals to 0 of, um, This is x n plus 1 over n plus 1. And of course, after this part, we have to shift. We just shift so that n equals to 1. Then what we're doing is we're letting n minus 1, which this gives n, n, and then negative 1, n minus 1, and that's where that extra 1, that extra negative comes from. And so what we have is this here. Now, of course, when you let x equal to 1, x equals to 1, 
we get this Taylor series, uh, this sum here. Uh, uh, this is negative one. This is the same thing as n plus one, uh, one, n, and that's exactly what we have here. It's exactly what we have here. This is equal to L of two. Okay. So, yeah, if you if you plug in n x to one, it, it this this whole thing fits. Uh, it this whole thing fits. All right. Start plugging in n equals two, n equals three. You'll you start getting this here. So that's where this comes from. Okay. It is this Taylor series for l n of one plus x. And that's where we get this. Okay. So our answer for that whole integral is equal to pi square over 24 minus ln of 2. Okay? Wow. I didn't think I would be able to solve that sum. I didn't think it was that difficult. Uh, very tricky. Uh, again, sometimes it looks like this and you're just like, okay, I don't know what to do next. But I guess simplifying it further or taking a different perspective will help you kind of uh, continue forward. Okay, a little intimidating, but that's okay. We can we can get through this. So here we can actually do partial fractions with x over. I'm sorry, x and one plus x here, right? This we know that one plus x is equal to plus x minus x. You can easily see that this is equal to that. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So when we split that, we end up with 1 plus x over x minus ln of 1 plus x over 1 plus x. Okay. We're going to use that geometric series. I'm, not, I'm sorry, the Taylor series that we, uh, that we saw for ln of 1 plus x. Okay. And so now that's going to give us, let me write this in yellow, so to 1, this is from infinity to n equals to 1, it was negative 1, n plus 1, x to the power of n over n, and we have x at the bottom as well, right? And then dx minus this portion here, it's just u substitution. This is just ln of u over u du. Okay. Uh, we know this port. This portion is easy. I'm just going to put that here, right? This is just uh, let w equal ln of u, whatever, right? Uh, we end up. Let me just go ahead and go like this. This is ln square of u over 2 from 1 to 2. Plug in 1, that's 0. Plug in 2 is what we would have. So what we have is negative half of ln square of 2. Okay. And here, uh, let me go ahead and put the sum outside just to clean our space. We have negative one n plus one over n, and we have n minus one dx. Okay, and so now we can go ahead and simplify this, right? Integrate this very easy. It's x to the power of n over n, so we end up having a sum of n equals to one of negative one to the power of n plus 1 over n squared, right? And then, after that, oh, well, I mean, we already have minus half ln squared of 2. And so this portion here, uh, so here, the sum for an alternating, an alternating Gauss sum, this is equal to negative pi squared over 12. Again, you can go ahead and challenge yourself to, to prove why 
uh, this equals to negative pi squared over 12 by knowing yes it is because it is related to this okay all right so knowing that we know we have a negative here so it's positive pi squared over 12 here so our answer is pi squared over 12 minus a half ln square of 2. And that is our answer. Okay? Oh god, now things are getting a little more hectic now. So, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Um, of course, this looks like we can use Taylor series because we, we do have a Taylor series for ln of 1 plus x. So we're probably going to use Taylor series. And I see that we have from 0 to 1. So to my suspicion, this is, probably, this is most likely a Taylor series integral. OK? So let's go ahead and dive right into Taylor series. Uh, of course, from 0 to 1, use ln 1 plus x. And we know that the Taylor series for that is negative 1 n plus 1 x to the power of n over n. Okay, and then we have x ln of x squared dx. Okay, we could actually uh, simplify this a lot further. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. n equals to 1. We have 2 negative 1 n plus 1 over n. We are integrating x n plus 1 ln of x. Okay, That square, I just kind of put it to the side for now. Okay, And now all we have to integrate is this. This is integration by parts, ln of x, x to the power of n plus 1. Uh, we've done this a lot of times. We've seen this a lot of times, plug in x equal 1 or 0, they're, they're just going to become 0 overall so what we have is negative or we can cancel out the negative by using the n plus one here and then we have x n plus one over n plus two and this is going to give us a sum n equals to one uh, 2 and negative 1 n over n. Uh, well, if you plug in 0, 1, it's, we're just going to get n plus 2 squared at the bottom. So now we have this. Okay. Um, how do we solve the sum? Right? We're speed integrators. We're not speed sum eaters. Uh, how do we deal with this? Okay. Don't freak out. All right. First step. Of course, this is, the majority of the times we're just going to have to experiment a lot. Okay? Alright, so problem solving strategies. Uh, let's consider what happens if we try partial fractions. Right? Okay. Uh, so we do have a 2. That's nice. Right? So if we factor, I mean, just pretend we're factoring out um, this here, right? And we're only focused on. 2 n plus 2 square uh, plus n minus n. If we do plus n minus n, we get n n plus 2 uh, minus n plus 2 square. Okay. Um, what now? Well, you can also do. Uh, partial fraction this part as well, right? Uh, multiply 2 and 2 top and bottom, and then do plus n minus n, and this will give us what? 1 over 2n minus 1 over 2 times n plus 2, and then minus n plus 2 squared, the one that we just had. Okay, 
Interesting. We know this. We've seen this. So this is equal to negative ln of 2, right? Because it comes from this, if you remember, n equals to 1, we have negative n, n plus 1. There's a negative. Don't forget that. And in this case, we didn't have that n plus 1 here. So, but literally letting x equals to 1, x equals to 1, you get ln of 2. And it's negative because we didn't have we don't have that plus 1. Okay? So, that's where this is, and that's what we have here. Okay? Uh, same goes with this portion. Let me make some room. Right, we can go ahead and simplify this. What is this? What is this? Right, this is equal to let's see, let n equals to one. I'm sorry. If we just focus on this, if we just focus on this, what is this? Right, n equals to one. Uh, this is equal to negative one-third plus one-fourth it's it's literally it's this again uh, but with however this is equal to n equals to three of this that's what that is right so it's like this again it's like the gauss sum that we did where we have to do a zero substitution within the sum. So of course, this is going to equal to negative ln of two, right? Uh, minus n equals to one, plug in n equals to one here, we get uh, negative one minus negative one, and then minus uh, n equals to two, uh, we get half, okay? So that's what this portion equals. Okay, nice. And then here, this here, we have, I know it's getting a little messy. We're just gonna deal with this. All right, this is equal to, let's see, plug in uh, n equals to 1, we get 3 square, etc. Oh, okay, so this is the same thing as n equals to 3 of n square of this. Wow. Okay, so then in that case, we, we, we've seen this before, right? We This is equal to negative pi square over 12. And then minus, of course, we have to zero substitute for n equals to 1 and n equals 2. n equals to 1, we get negative 1. Minus, then n equals to 2, we get 1 fourth. Okay. Okay. So that's, so now we just have to put everything in total. So for this, for this whole thing that we have, the answer is, well, what is this? This is half times negative ln of 2, okay, uh, minus this portion here is minus a half of negative, well, I could just cancel out the negative, honestly, uh, ln of 2 plus 1 half uh, minus 1, right, and then of course, this portion here is uh, neg minus, uh, wow, we can actually cancel that out, plus pi squared over 12, um, I have to be very careful, it's minus 1, uh, plus 1 fourth. Okay, wow, so this cancels out, we have a half so when we simplify it, we have one half times negative one half. So this is minus one. Four. Oh wow, this cancels out. So everything here cancels this out, and so our answer is 
So our answer, this is pi squared over 12 minus 1. And that is our answer. Okay. A lot of sum juggling. Again, the most difficult part is literally computing the sum. <laughs> okay. Taylor series. It's very helpful. Okay. So I uh, highly recommend that you rewatch this video and practice solving it on your own so that you get comfortable using Taylor series as well as getting comfortable computing the, the sum that you will come across in integration bees. Okay? All right. Hopefully that was helpful. Again, this, this is an advanced concept. Uh, but yeah, hopefully I helped uh, simplify it for you. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next part.